Hello everyone, welcome to Air Canada's uh, flight planning facil facility in Toronto. My name is Captain Jim Adam and I'll be your captain on our flight to St. Martin today on the Boeing 767. Joining me is uh, First Officer Russ Berry. And uh, what we've done is uh, we've got our flight planning information up here on the, uh, on the computer screen. And uh, we can run you through some, through some of the basics of what we're going to do here today. The uh, flight planning system is uh, supplied by, uh, we contract it through Lufthansa, it's uh, Lufthansa Integrated Dispatch Operation, LIDO. And uh, our uh, flight today is 1244, it gives us the date, captain's name, captain's employee number, the FIN number of the aircraft, uh, so it's a 767-300, that's what the 763 uh, designates. FIN 633, that's our civil registration and our cell call code for HF operations. Fuel factor is the, uh, every aircraft has a slightly different fuel factor, just different burns on different aircraft that uh, the flight management computer adjusts for. And then uh, dispatch uh, contact information. We have a couple of minor items that are unserviceable today that they put at the top of our flight plan. So we have the uh, pass, actually the uh, in-flight entertainment system has some uh, problems. The entire in-flight entertainment system is in ops, so some of the folks may not be too happy about that. Quite often though, maintenance can have that rectified before we depart, so we'll see what the status of that is when we get down to the aircraft. The planning summary, this gives us the overall uh, view of the flight, so cost index zero, which means we're at uh, long range cruise for this, flying at uh, 33,000 feet initially, flight level 330. Trope height at top of uh, climb, that's a tropopause height, is 33,000 as well. Temperature deviation, average for the route, plus three. Component plus 25 is the average. The uh, oops, great circle distance is 1,754 miles, and the distance on our flight plan route is 1,862. En route time, that's wheels off to wheels on, is 411, and the burn is 19,600 kilos. So this is our flight plan route. We're gonna come off uh, Toronto's 24 right, and uh, 444 knot true airspeed initially at 330, and uh, Lester 8 SID, and these are the waypoints we'll be flying over on the way down. We uh, head over uh, a few checkpoints here to exit the coast at JFK, and then we pick up uh, one of the, uh, we're, we'll be in what's called Waters Airspace, the Western Atlantic uh, route structure. So they have airways in this area, so Lima 461 is the first one down to Lind, and then uh, King, Kiner, 461 over Bovik, and that takes us right down to uh, PJM, and then down to our destination of uh, St. Martin. And you get a quick peek at it on our LE chart here, just to see where we're going to coast out. This is the uh, JFK area up in here. And then we come down, we uh, enter Oceanic Airspace at King, and then over Kiner, Bovik, straight south on this L461. These tracks are similar to the North Atlantic track system, but they're only 50 miles lateral separation as opposed to 60. And uh, this is Bermuda here. We'll fly just to beam Bermuda, and then south from there, down into uh, the uh, Caribbean. The uh, planned fuel for the trip is uh, our taxi fuel out of Toronto is uh, 400 kilos, which is 17 minutes. The burn to uh, St. Martin is 19,600 kilos today for 4 hours and 11 minutes in the air. The uh, extra fuel, contingency type fuel, is uh, 9 minutes, which is 600 kilos. Our alternate is Antigua, which is uh, 25 minutes away and a 2,000 kilo burn. Final reserve, we need 30 minutes over destination of final reserve fuel, that's 1,900 kilos. And today we'll be tankering down to St. Martin, and uh, we tanker the fuel down because it's a little cheaper to carry it down than it is to actually uplift it in St. Martin. So uh, we have 12,000 kilos, uh, which will give us uh, 2 hours and 34 minutes of extra fuel. So the block fuel we're looking for from the refueler in Toronto is 36,600 kilos. This aircraft will hold about 77,500, so we've got lots of room for extra fuel if we need it. And this FOD is our fuel over day's destination at St. Martin, 16.6 which is uh, 3 hours and 38 minutes of fuel remaining when we hit our destination. The operational impacts is basically a, a little uh, reference tool to give us differences in burn for uh, climbing or descending uh, altitudes. If our weight goes up one ton, for example, we would, it would cost us an extra 100 kilos. Down one ton, it would be 100 kilos less. And then the differences, uh, that's the difference in flight level. If we go uh, up one, it'll be 300 kilos more, and uh, down one, it's 100 more, and then the cost index of 200, which would be a high-speed cruise, will cost us 500 kilos, so it gives us a reference if we change any of the parameters on the plan. So, we just roll it over here, our times. This is basically our uh, estimated out, off, on, and in times in GMT and local. And our block time is uh, basically uh, pushed back to uh, parked, and uh, 4 hours and 33 minutes today. The sked is 4.30, so we're very close to sked. 
weight to the aircraft. Uh, basically, uh, this uh, tells us we're on flight plan release number one. 201 passengers forecast on board. Our zero fuel weight, the max we can carry today is 125. We're forecast at 112.9. Fuel, max I could carry uh, is 51.8, and that's because we're landing weight limited. This was the L on this number down here. So we're limited to 51,800 to meet our max landing weight of 145. 149, so 145, 149 kilos. Uh, takeoff weight is uh, 149.1, and the max takeoff weight would be 167, or sorry, 164.7. And our forecast landing weight is 129.5. Um, and that's our max landing weight, as I mentioned, 145,149 kilos. So the uh, when we have the fuel boarded, we'll fill it in here. Terrain check, there is no uh, terrain issues on this route over the Caribbean. For flying in a mountainous area, it would come up with the information down there. And uh, this part gives us our max oceanic entry. It, uh, it will be flight level 390. That's uh, the highest altitude we can um, get to based on our flight plan data. And uh, then these are the various waypoints on our route headed southbound. And uh, it goes on for a number of pages here. There's a number of waypoints down there. And taking us uh, our bottom line over our destination. The uh, estimated fuel on board at our destination is 16,600 kilos and the minimum fuel on board would be 4,000 kilos. Forecast winds aloft are all shown here for the various waypoints at various altitudes. So if we change altitudes or for planning purposes, we can enter this information in the flight management computer, come up with uh, predicted fuel burns and times. And uh, this is our ICAO flight plan. Uh, we cross-checked that against the original route. We've done that already just to make sure that the filed route is the same as what Lido is using for the uh, flight plan route. This is the uh, weather package for the uh, trip. So uh, basically it tells us that uh, that's our pushback time, 1545 Zulu. That's our forecast arrival time of 2015 Zulu. <clears throat> and uh, the Toronto weather currently out there right now at 13 Zulu is four miles in light snow and uh, 1,000 broken. So we may have to spray, may not. Depends on whether it's sticking to the wings or not, but it is plus one degree out there. So uh, spraying is a possibility. This is the FT for Toronto. And uh, then Toronto runway reports here for runway uh, 24 right we're forecast on is 10% bare and dry, damp and 90% bare and dry. St. Martin, we have an excellent forecast down there. Our arrival time uh, is, falls in this bracket here, so we've got a good wind out of the east, which is favorable for the uh, runway down there. 09014 gust 20, which is excellent, almost right on the nose. Uh, six, plus six, better than six miles visibility. Showers in the vicinity and scattered cloud at 1900. And this is a very standard forecast this time of year in the Caribbean. Our alternate is also in good shape, uh, wind out of the east at uh, Antigua, and uh, excellent uh, weather conditions forecast, showers in the area, same thing there. Twin Sigmet for the Pierco uh, terminal area, or uh, ATC area, which is a little further south from us, but they've got uh, some turbulence uh, between 30, or 300 and 450. That should be all south of us, though. Okay, this uh, gives us a good uh, overall picture of our track. We're going to cross one jet stream here. It's at 35,000 feet just as we coast out over New York. And then we're going to head uh, over the Bermuda area and then pretty well straight south from there to St. Martin. This is one isolated area of embedded uh, CBs to 340. We looked at the radar, or sorry, the satellite picture earlier, and uh, this should be all uh, underneath us as we cross through that area. Second jet here at flight level 390. <clears throat> so. We have numerous charts with uh, winds aloft at various altitudes at uh, 300, 340, 390. And this is all for planning purposes or if we want to uh, change altitudes en route, we can get an idea what, uh, what the conditions will be. And then this uh, chart here gives us the trope height, uh, which uh, this dotted line is the trope and it just shoots way above us as we get further south. And these are all the waypoints on our route till top of descent and then down into St. Martin. These are pyreps from aircraft that have gone ahead of us. So for example, this is Air Canada 1240. He's at flight level 350. The pyrep was filed at 1238 Zulu. He's getting occasional light turbulence. And uh, this, uh, same flight, 1240 down in this area, got intermittent light. So at flight level 350, we could anticipate possibility of a little turbulence in those areas. Other than that, the route looks excellent. And uh, that covers that. We get a lot of NOTAMs on these routes. 
So um, the uh, few things relating to crew alerts relating to uh, aircraft systems. Uh, we have uh, Toronto has some minor items that won't uh, affect us operationally. And uh, we went through this entire package a little earlier because it is rather long. And uh, basically, um, nothing that's going to affect us operationally on today's flight. It gives us no TAMs for uh, each FIR we fly through as well, too, which can be rather extensive. So we take a, an overview of the whole thing and make sure there's nothing that's going to affect us. We're just going to uh, pull up uh, some satellite pictures of our proposed route. So uh, we go into uh, international satellites, and I have the tropical Atlantic picture here that was taken at 1400 Zulu or 9 a.m. local time this morning. So that picture is 15 minutes old. Our route will come down in this area here. That's the weather band we had looked at on the uh, chart a few minutes ago. And uh, once we're south of that, it's clear sailing all the way to St. Martin, which is right in here. Nice day for flying. So that pretty well finishes up our uh, flight planning for today, and now we'll head on down to the aircraft and take it from there. Hello again for everybody at uh, Just Planes. It's Captain Jim Adam and First Officer Russ Berry back with you on board our Boeing 767-300 series. Uh, just going to uh, start into our uh, cockpit check for flight 1244 to uh, St. Martin. So uh, Russ has been busy just doing some of the preliminary initialization work on our uh, flight management computer, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get things going on my side. So we check a few things when we first get up here. Uh, we want to make sure there's no foreign objects uh, blocking the rudder pedals. We check our uh, IRSs are in the uh, nav mode and they are aligning. Actually, we've got them fully aligned at this time. And uh, seats all adjusted. Park brake is set. We want a minimum of 1,500 PSI on our accumulator. And uh, we check uh, a couple items on our uh, flight management computer. So Russ and I will do this together. So uh, we're showing a uh, 767-300 series with uh, Pratt & Whitney engines. Uh, Air Canada has two types of engines on their 767s. We use Pratt & Whitney 4060s or General Electric CF680C engengines. So uh, database is AC4, which is a code for a 767 database, effective till February 9th, 2012. The fuel factor that I mentioned up in flight planning, the burn adjustment for this particular aircraft is plus four, which is correct. And we go to our position init to make sure that uh, the airplane knows where we are. So uh, Russ inputted uh, gate 179 in Toronto. And uh, you got your chart handy there, Russ. I'll read the coordinates off for you. Okay, go ahead. So uh, what we put in was uh, north 43406, west 079367. Perfect. OK, and that's all set and initialized. So our time check, I've got 1514 on my side. All the times are good. And uh, I have to do uh, an oxygen check now, so uh, just stand by for a second here. Ground to flight deck. Anybody there? Just check the flow of oxygen. My side, Russ is checking the flow on his side to make sure everything is good. Our oxygen pressure minimum for dispatch is 1,200 PSI. We've got 1,440 right now, so we're well above our minimum for this trip. So the next item on the agenda is a lights test. So how about if I hit it, I'll look at the upper panel, and Russ will cover the lower panels. good here and the back panel is also looking good okay so now we uh, go with a geographic scan of the uh, starting on the overhead panel on the left hand side and I just work through to make sure all the switches are in the proper position and enunciators are where they should be for our flight HF's both up here we make sure we've got a little static on the HF first flight of the day we do a couple of additional checks. We do a standby power check, so I put it on the battery. Showing the battery is discharging, the aircraft is powered on standby power. Back to the auto mode. This is our electrical panel here, auxiliary power unit. The uh, cockpit voice recorder, we hit the test button. There's a little uh, indicator that moves up into a green band. It should sit there for five seconds. There we go. These are just uh, lighting controls down here. Emergency lights, pasture oxygen. 
Ram air turbine switch. And uh, one, two, four, four is an even flight, so we'll use the number two igniters on this. Ignition uh, are set to auto. And our fuel, 36.6, and our required is 36.6. So it's on board and configured. We have 2,400 in our center, so we'll be using the center tank today. And uh, once the refueling is complete, we select our seatbelt sign on. And uh, these are the windshield wipers. More lighting switches down here. Up to our window heat, the number two HF, high frequency radio. This aircraft is equipped with SATCOM, so we've got SATCOM switches up here. And uh, this is for cabin call, talking to various stations in the cabin of the aircraft. Pasture signs, the cabin altitude control, it's all looking good. And we're about uh, 14 feet or so down there, I believe. And we're in auto two, even flights we go auto two, odd flights we go auto one. Cabin altitude, diff pressure, cabin rate, all indicating good. Various other enunciators for equipment cooling bay. And then our uh, air conditioning panel, pneumatics and air conditioning. And uh, did we have an air uh, hose hooked up out there? Uh? Okay, so what I'll do, I'll select auto and one recirc fan on then. Cargo heats are on, temperatures in the cabin all look good. Stand by. The checklist, then we come across our uh, upper panel here. Set our runway heading, we're de anticipate departure off runway 24 rate, which is 237 degrees. And then annunciator lights down in here, standby engine instruments, and then we uh, do a check of our uh, ICAS. That's the engine indication and crew alerting system. So uh, basically right now, these are all normal <coughs> indications for a shutdown aircraft. And we clear it out that way we're aware of any new indications that come up. We need a minimum of uh, 10 uh, uh, quarts on this aircraft. Right now it's showing 23 and 21. And over to status, we check our hydraulic quantities are all well above the minimum. And the oxygen pressure, as we mentioned earlier, is good. Brake temperature gauges come up down on the lower right-hand side there. Aircraft has been sitting quite a while, so brake temps aren't an issue. If it had come in on a short turnaround and they used excessive braking, uh, we'd have some high temperature indications there. So, these are your flap indicator, alternate flap switches, landing gear. Down to our ADI controls. I have minus 20 here, uh, Russ. And uh, park brake is on, and I've got two units on the trim. Radar control panels down here, VHF radios. My audio selector panel, all in good shape. And we'll do a fire test here. So the first thing we check is the wheel well fire. So I hit the test, and we get the two uh, warnings and the wheel well fire enunciations on the ICAS. And then I hit the cancel, and now we'll also check the uh, engine fire indications. And we should get uh, 12 lights. And on the ICAS, we get uh, five red and two amber, and that's all good. These are the actual fire switches here for the um, uh, fire bottles to discharge. And that's all good down in there. So up on the forward, we just cross-check our uh, flight instruments. So Russ, I've got uh, 358 knots on the barber pole. And my headings are uh, 280, 280, and on the standby, we're indicating about uh, 284. Okay, and that's all with uh, within limits. And we just do a quick check of all our other uh, indications to make sure everything is looking good down here. The current altimeter is two nine or seven six inches. My primary there, my standby down here. So two nine seven six inches gives me about five hundred ninety feet on the primary, and five ninety two on the standby. Five ninety on two nine seven six. Excellent, and. Uh, And uh, Russ just double checks his side over here. Check. And that completes our cockpit scan. So the next thing we do is uh, we look for clearance. We didn't get a PDC yet, eh? What do you say we call? Sure. Since uh, we're within a half hour. Uh, Toronto clearance. Delivery to Air Canada's. 1244 heavy on gate 179. Uh, we have information uh, alpha, but no PDC. 
Good Air Canada 1244 Heavy. Uh, no PDC because the routing changed all the way to Hancock uh, near New York there, so you'll have to read it back. Advise ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Go ahead for Canada's uh, 1244. And a 1244 Heavy cleared to St. Martin via the Leicester 8 departure. The routing now is Bulge Intersection, Bravo Uniform, Lima, Golf Echo, Victor 252, Golf Echo Echo, Direct X Tall Intersection, Echo X Ray, Tango Oscar Lima, Direct Hancock, which is Hotel November Kilo, and then your flight planned route, Runway 24 Right, Squawk 2236. Air Canada is 1244 clear to St. Martin, and it's uh, the Lester 8 departure, Bulge, uh, Victor 252 to Golf Echo Echo, direct Extall, direct Hancock, flight plan route, squawk 2236, departing off 24 right, Air Canada is 1244. Got a 1244 heavy, read back correct, and do you know if you require de-icing? We will require de-icing Air Canada's 1244. 1244 heavy, thanks. Have a good flight, de-icing noted, and apron 12207 ready. 2207 ready. Okay, that all sounds good. Just a minor change in our route, and uh, Russ and I will uh, modify the uh, flight plan. And I've got the uh, transponder squawk in here of 2236, and uh, how about if I uh, read it off and you load it up? So uh, we're going off of uh, the 24s. It's the wrong way, so what do you say we put in uh, a 3,000-foot acceleration height, doing an NADP-1 noise abatement profile, getting us up quicker so we can get our turn on route. And uh, for the flex thrust, it's going to be a little damp out there. Okay, Russ, let's go with 44 degrees and see what we get there. We had the wet data. If we've got any snow accumulating out there, we'll get the, uh, the quarter-inch slush, but I think we're okay right now. And, uh, okay, so 44 comes up at uh, 1.48. So the uh, flight management computers uh, worked out our uh, assumed temperature of uh, 44 degrees, reducing our thrust down to 1.48. Full thrust is not required on this takeoff. And the speeds will be uh, V1 146, VR 150, and V2 156. So now we uh, set our bugs. So I've got uh, V1 146, that's our takeoff decision speed. VR one five zero is our rotation speed, and uh, V two is one fifty six, which will be our speed we'll be targeting if we have an engine failure. One fifty six, and then what we do is we uh, check that versus a little chart on the side here. Russ, I get uh, one eighty eight and two twenty eight. Okay, and that's for our flap retraction schedule. And then we hand the takeoff data over to the first officer. He cross-checks to make sure we've used all the correct numbers. And our refueler is here, Russ, so I'll just do a quick check for him. Okay, we just had a little discussion with maintenance regarding a problem with our in-flight entertainment system that we talked about in flight planning. And our uh, Toronto maintenance crew did an excellent job on rectifying the problem by changing a server here in Toronto. So uh, it's now just in the process of, uh, process of downloading to the other two servers on board, so we should have in-flight entertainment for the folks. So we're going to brief the uh, Lester 8 SID out of Toronto. And uh, the chart uh, is 10-3 Bravo. It's effective the 15th of December, 2011. And the uh, transition altitude we talked about is 18,000 feet. 100 miles safe altitude is 4,900. The highest quadrantal here is 3,100 off to the uh, east of the Toronto VOR. And uh, Lester 8 is max 250 below 10. Noise abatement, we're going to do at NADP 1, which is uh, approved here. And off runway uh, 24 right. Unless otherwise assigned by ATC, climb on a 237 heading. At Toronto 1.6 DME, left turn 235 is assigned for heading to vectors to assigned route. Maintain 5,000. So I'll get the 5,000 in here. And uh, that routing should be in our uh, FMC. We've got the departure, 237 heading. And then a <clears throat> to two miles and a 235 heading. So that's all good, so we'll depart in LNAV. So that's all done. One little briefing to go here, Russ, if you're all set. Uh, we're gonna be five flap uh, with an assumed temperature of 44 degrees off runway 24 right. Speeds, 146, 150, 156. And I've got uh, 156, we're in LNAV, 237 degrees initial heading, 5,000 feet the altitude. Bugs are set up nicely, nothing to tune down here. Check. 
Well, uh, start our APU. We're coming up on five minutes before departure time here. And while the APU is starting, Russ and I will do our emergency review. First flight of each crew pairing, we uh, just review uh, some of the critical uh, abnormals on the aircraft. So, Russ, any time you're flying the aircraft and an emergency develops, uh, you continue to fly unless uh, I say I have control. Exception to that would be any problem below V1. I'll have to make a decision whether to continue or reject. If the decision is to reject, I'll call it and immediately retard the thrust levers to idle, disengage the autothrottles, observe or apply max braking, speed brake lever up, and maximum reverse condition, or consistent with conditions. Beautiful, so I'll uh, ensure maximum braking. Max reverse consistent with conditions until stop. Set the park brake if required. I'll call for the applicable driller checklist. I'll complete the driller checklist as required. Call AD and advise ATC. Very good. So if an immediate evacuation is not required, all PA remain seated, remain seated. If uh, urgent communication with the uh, in-charge flight attendant is required, it's in-charge flight attendant call or report to the flight deck. And if an evacuation is required, we'll call for the checklist passenger evacuation. I'll advise ATC of the situation and we'll read and do the passenger evacuation checklist. Excellent. So uh, I'm flying the first leg, so we'll say I'm at the controls. We have an engine fire uh, or failure at or after V1. I'll continue the takeoff and rotate normally at VR. Okay, I'll uh, identify and cancel any warning, and uh, when I see positive rate, I'll call positive rate. Okay, and I will call gear up. I'll move the gear uh, selector lever up and uh, turn the auto throttle switch off. Beautiful. So uh, at uh, 400 feet AGL, I will call uh, LNAV or heading select to fly the departure procedure. I'll ensure LNAV is engaged. And uh, above 40 feet AGL, minimum V2, I'm going to call for an engine fire drill. Okay, uh, when we're above 400 feet, I'll uh, check the ICAS, and uh, if it's the left engine uh, that's on uh, fire today, we'll call uh, uh, left hand uh, thrust lever. So I'll confirm the correct thrust lever, and I'll call idle. Move the selector to idle and place my hand on the left fuel control switch and say left fuel control. I'll confirm the correct fuel control switch, call cutoff. I'll move it to cut off, put my hand on the left fire switch and say left fire switch. And I'll confirm the correct switch, call pull. I'll pull if any light remains on in the handle or on the ICAS. I will uh, rotate the handle to the left and say bottle one discharge, discharge light on, start the time for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, if the fire's still going, I'll rotate the handle to the right and say bottle two discharge, uh, discharge light on, and hopefully call the fire out. Excellent. So at TOCA, I will call auto throttle arm switch off, bug up, vertical speed plus 200. I'll commence acceleration. Fly the command bars and call for flap retraction on schedule. I'll give you all those selections and uh, retract the flaps on command. Very good. So when the flaps have been selected up and the indicated airspeed is VRF 30 plus 80, I'm going to call flight level change, max continuous thrust command center. I'll give you all those selections and uh, we can adjust the thrust normal. Very good. And then uh, I'll call checklist engine fire. Roger, we'll complete the checklist. And uh, if we're uh, returning to land, we'll climb to a minimum safe altitude to complete the checks. If we're proceeding en route, I'll call line select engine out and VNAV. I'll do those selections. And uh, I'll climb to the uh, single engine cruise altitude, giving consideration to the MEA. So uh, one more to review. If we have a rapid depressurization, I'll assume control of the aircraft call rapid depressurization drill. Don my mask. Communicate on the interphone. Captain on oxygen. I'll do the same and say first officer on oxygen. I'll select the cabin signs on. Okay, and while you're doing that, I'll uh, check the uh, situation, uh, the pressurization control panel, and call cabin okay or cabin uncontrollable. Okay, so if appropriate, while you're working on the cabin, I'll PA attention. Flight attendants secure the cabin passengers, take your seats. If you call cabin uncontrollable, I'll call emergency descent. So I'll set the lowest safe altitude, or 10,000 feet, in the MCP window. Initiate a turn if required. Select flight level change. Ensure the thrust comes back to idle. Extend the speed brakes to full. And the airspeed, if there's no structural damage, I can go right up to Mach 8.6, 360 knots. Roger, while you're doing all that, I'll uh, turn the passenger oxygen on when required. I'll make sure the seatbelt sign is on. I'll make a PA of my own and say, attention, put your oxygen masks on immediately. And uh, Very good. So established to the center, I'll call check checklist, rapid depressurization. If you call for the uh, checklist, we'll uh, silently read all items of both checklists and uh, bring attention to any uh, missed items uh, after the descent. I'll read aloud and action all uh, non-memorized items. Outstanding, and uh, if it had been an explosive decompression, we'll go into that emergency descent immediately after selecting the cabin signs on. Roger. I'll squawk 7700 and get you an altimeter setting. Call you 2000 above and 1000 above your level off altitude. Excellent. Okay, so that completes our uh, emergency review. So uh, Russ and I have to do uh, de-icing today, so we'll get you to pull out the uh, de-icing checklist out of normal operations there, please, Russ. And we'll just take a quick look at what we're going to do. We're going to be going to the centralized de-icing center here and doing an engines-on spray. 
So uh, airframe de-icing engines on checklist, uh, basically. Talks about consider extending and inspecting the flaps at the gate. The aircraft is fairly clean coming in, so that won't be required today. Advise passengers, uh, sorry, after engine start, accomplish the normal after start checklist, but do not extend flaps. We'll advise the crew and passengers, so I'll make a PA effect to that, uh, or PA to that effect. And then uh, once we taxi over to the de-icing center, we'll continue on with the checklist as far as configuring the aircraft for spray. And then once the spray is complete, we can figure the aircraft for flight again. So we're both uh, good with that. Check the holdover time if it's required. We may need just type 1 or we might need a type 4 overspray depending on what the snow is doing out here. And ladies and gentlemen, good morning. This is your captain speaking. My name is Jim Adam. Our first officer today is uh, Russ Berry. We'd like to welcome you aboard our uh, Boeing 767 service for St. Martin. Ground crew's done an excellent job of getting all the baggage on board. Uh, doors are all closed and everybody's here, so we'll be pushing back in just a moment or two. Uh, after pushback, we'll be making a quick stop at the uh, de-icing center. Just a little bit of snow accumulating on the wings with this light uh, snowfall. After that, uh, proceeding down the runway 24 right and uh, departing towards the southwest. Left-hand turnout, uh, heading out over New York. And uh, we'll coast out there, head a little uh, west of Bermuda, and then straight south from that point into St. Martin. Weather down south, excellent today. Light winds out of the east, scattered cloud, and a temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. First Officer Barry will have a little chat with you on descent to give you an update with the latest weather and our estimated time of arrival. I'd like to thank you very much for choosing Air Canada for your travel plans, and we hope you have a pleasant flight. Thank you. Air Canada 1244, give way to an RJ right to left, then push tail north on lane 9. Okay, so uh, as per the checklist there, Russ, after we... Uh, Start the engines. It'll be a normal after start check. Let's just leave our flaps retracted. Okay. Roger that. Starting engines right and left. So we've got the starter running now. We're looking for about 24% N2 when it uh, stabilizes there. There's our fuel on. This is our EGT here waiting for 20 seconds for a light off. The engines are very slow starting. Oh, no, bring the good morning, Air Canada 1285. Okay, we checked the pins are moved. Let's revert to answering. Air Canada 1258, apron push, tail south. Tail south, Air Canada 1258. So the apron push, tail south. Starter cutting out, and then we'll see a flash here as the generator comes online. Blue 27, push off hotel, three, call for tow. Push and call for tow, uh, blue 27. And yeah, there's the right engine normal, let's start left. Delta Romeo 711. Okay, so Russ has got the starter and ground. So there's our N2 is rotating. Apron 27, set. Blue 27, hold to Delta Quebec. Uh, oil pressure and looks like about 24% will be good, so we select the fuel on, and we get a fuel flow, and we should see a light off here within 20 seconds. And there she goes. Apron Air Canada 900, gate 193, you ready for push? Air Canada 900, Toronto Apron. Tail south on lane 10. Tail south, lane 10, Air Canada 900. Slowly coming up to idle. There's our starter cutter. And the generator's online. Apron, good morning, Air Canada 971, Delta Romeo 164 Alpha. And there we go, good idle parameters, uh, left engine's normal. Air Canada 1244, heavy hold to the Delta Quebec. Hold short to uh, Delta Quebec, Air Canada 1244. Blue 27, ground, standby one. Good 
Fairground Jazz, uh, 634, Fort Truck Victor. Mike. Chicken 956, Thermos Tower, 1835. Airbus that's going by us, so you can see the uh, green and indicating Canada, fluid on his wings, green uh, indicating type Delta 4 fluid. And contact keeper in the 12207. Ground, uh, Jazz 634, Fort Truck Mike. Ice Manager Canada's uh, 1244, the Boeing 767. Air Canada 1244, good morning. Taxi into the icing bay of one center. In position, report brake set, aircraft configured. Okay, in position uh, one center, and uh, we'll call you uh, with the brake set and configured for spray, Air Canada 1244. Okay, so we'll be looking for that. Uh Signage on the left-hand side indicating Air Canada 1244, so the uh, bay is set up for us, and it'll indicate our stop position. And Russ, if you could go with the de-icing checklist, engine's on, please. Okay, uh, this is uh, airframe uh, de-icing engine is on checklist. It says, uh, consider extending and expecting the flaps at the gate prior to engine start. We decided not to do that. Uh, after engine start, accomplished the normal after start checklist, which we did. Advise crew and passengers, which was done by the uh, checklist says, uh, check when cleared to taxi into the de-icing facility, pack control selectors off. I'll go ahead and select those off. Yeah, you go ahead. This is the ice coordinator, it's flight 197. Check. Engine bleed air switches off. Flight, uh, flight Columbia. Yeah, it's flight 197, uh, gate 141. Did anybody have a look at us? And uh, when aircraft... Uh, stand by one, sir. Stop, and we are brake set. External lights, except for the navigation and any wind lights, off. And we are off. It says obtain uh, time of anti-icing fluid application and fluid type. Note precipitation rate and consult the holdover chart. I have a holdover chart here on my right. Excellent. Okay, so let's uh, advise them we want uh, type 1 with a type 4 overspray, please. Place manager, Canada's 1244. The brakes are set. We're configured for spray. We need uh, type 1 and type 4. Air Canada 1244, hold your position. The icing starts now, type 1 and type 4. Okay, so um, what we're checking here is our holdover time, the amount of time that. Uh, we're good with uh, this de-ice spray before we either have to uh, inspect it or in some cases actually come back to the de-icing bay for another spray. So the uh, green chart at the top of the page is the one we're using. And uh, do this two-handed here. <laughs> Basically for our temperature range, if you can get that uh, rest, we're uh, minus three and above and we've got light snow. So uh, we're good for uh, 40 minutes here before we have to do a uh, uh, inspection of the wings. And then uh, at 100, or one hour and 20 minutes, we'd have to come back for a second spray. That all sounds good to you. Ice Man Air Canada 900, uh, two north. Yeah, just a quick overview of our de-icing fluids. Uh, type 1 is basically a de-icing fluid. So it would be used if, uh, say, we had, uh, well, to remove contamination from the aircraft. And uh, it's normally applied uh, hot. And uh, it... Uh, if there was no active precipitation uh, falling at this time, we could just spray off whatever was on the wings with type one and go. Because we've got snow showers off and on now, and we're not sure how long we'll be in the lineup before we go, we've elected to go with a type four overspray. Type four is anti-icing, and that uh, keeps the wings clean for uh, a very uh, extensive amount of time. Like we're good for 40 minutes with type four in today's condition. So that should uh, give us lots of time to get to the button of the runway and go. Our apron at Air Canada 1244, go ahead. Air Canada 1244, the icing is complete, the ice type 1, any ice type 4, 100%, holdover at 07. Aircraft is clean and safe from the equipment. Continue to hold and contact Pack Control 3117 for taxi. Air Canada 1244 Heavy, wind 2 and 0, 12, gusting 18, clear takeoff for runway 24A. Okay, clear for takeoff 24A, Air Canada's uh, 1244. Okay, if you get all the lights there, please rest. And the balance of the checklist. Roger. <coughs> Air Canada 1250, change of plans, go to the left-hand lane instead. And the weather... Uh... 
Left hand side to the base, just uh, confirm for account 1258. 1258, that is correct. Roger, we'll do. Okay, check that. Uh, so it'll be 146, 150, 156. Initial headings 237, picking up the LDAP departure to maintain 5,000. Transition altitude is 18,000 feet. And it'll be toga thrust takeoff, and uh, just uh, be aware, Russ, we go through a wind shear area there, just call out any airspeed changes, anything drastic happens. Monitor the old profile. Roger. And N1. Russ, Eighty. Roger. V1, rotate. Pause the rate. Gear up. And we're in hell now. Air Canada 1258, holding short 24 right, and uh, we're uh, ready. Yeah, 1258, line up on 24 right. Line up 24 right, Air Canada 1258, are they still reporting the uh, wind shear? And we're showing EPRL cap, bam, let's Air go. Canada 1254, can encounter anything on the way up? Uh, negative. Point. Thank you, Canada 1244, departure 2088. Okay, so we'll select mobile jump and execute it, please. Is, uh, and I'll select uh, LNAV and... Canada 1258, Roger climb 7,000. Start a left hand turn over to the bulge intersection. Canada 1258. Uh, 1258, thank you. Hey, Canada 1244, contact Toronto on 133.3. 3. Beautiful. Well, time to get the old Ray-Bans out. And here we are at flight level 200 for 230. Uh, 200 for 230. Engine anti-ice off, please. And I think we can turn the seatbelt signs off there now, please, uh, Russ. Okay. There we go. Another successful launch. Air Canada 1244, Cleveland Center, Roger. Leaving flight level 280, clear direct to X-Fall. Okay, out of uh, flight level 280, direct to X-Fall, Air Canada 1244. Okay, so the clearance we just got was uh, as we climbed through flight level 280, we're just climbing through 27.3 at this time. We're cleared now direct to the X-Fall intersection. I'll just increase the scale on my map. Just cuts a little corner for us here. And Russ will set it up and we'll execute it as we go through flight level 280. There we go, Russ. We can execute Extol, please. And we're in LNAV and we're going out of 280, going direct Extol. Okay, so uh, right now we're just uh, upstate New York, just south of the Finger Lakes region. Uh, there we go, sorry, we were interrupted by ATC there. So we're just south of uh, the Rochester, Syracuse area, the Finger Lakes in upstate New York. Uh, Rome, New York is just off at uh, about our uh, eight o'clock position. And uh, we're currently uh, about uh, 130 miles uh, north of JFK at this time. Airport out on the left hand side is called uh, Stewart, also known as Newburgh, New York. And uh, you can see the Hudson River uh, just to the east of it. That's uh, one of our common alternates flying into the New York terminal area. It's fairly close, just, just outside of where the holding patterns are. So it's an excellent place to drop into if you need more fuel going into the New York terminal area. Canada 1244, New York 125.32. Cactus 1985, contact New York Center 134.32. Good day. 3432, Cactus 1985. 
235 Delta X New York Center 134.6. Canada 1244 Boston Center Roger. Good afternoon. And this what? And uh, smooth for Canada 1244. Okay, thank you. It should stay that way. Okay, uh, folks, we're just coming up over uh, New York City at this time, and uh, Teterboro Airport just went under the nose. This is the Hudson River, the first river flowing along here. You can see an uh, excellent view of Manhattan, East River on the opposite side. Okay, LaGuardia just down here, and then if we just go a little bit uh, to the southeast of LaGuardia, we've got an excellent view of uh, JFK Airport, and uh, Newark is just below us at this time, so the three main New York airports in a very condensed area here in New York airspace. And uh, this is Long Island running off to the left here. And uh, difficult to see, but just about uh, two-thirds of the way down the island is uh, Farmingdale Airport, which is an airport we sometimes use on charters, taking hockey teams in uh, to play the New York Islanders. Brickyard 3287, descend and maintain level 220. Dispatch flight level 220, Brickyard 3287. And center, Air Canada's 1244, heavy with you, 350. Air Canada 1244, uh, US Center, roger. Can we just get 350? So the, uh, the oceanic clearance in the uh, West Atlantic uh, route structure, basically your, uh, your clearance you receive at your departure airport is good all the way down to destination. Unlike a uh, Atlantic flight where you have to get a separate overseas clearance for the uh, overseas portion of the flight. So what we just got from New York Center though, they want to know our requested altitude and Mach number as we enter oceanic airspace and we have to hard tune that Mach number. So we've been assigned Mach 7.7 uh, we've chosen Mach, or flight level 350, which is our flight planned altitude, and uh, we'll be all set. The waypoint he gave us a clearance to is called King, and uh, we can show you on our chart here. And uh, catch up 1207, uh, you yeah. would like to make Thanks, So on the chart here, this is uh, JFK up here. We just came off JFK, uh, flying yeah. down uh, Lima 461 to the Lind intersection, and then we're proceeding, actually at this time, we've been cleared direct to King. And as you can see, there's a boundary line here on the Jeppesen chart. So north of the boundary is New York uh, air traffic control airspace. South is New York oceanic airspace. As we approach the King intersection, we'll be handed off to uh, Air Inc., uh, the air radio operator. And uh, we'll uh, get our HF assignments from them, do a cell call check on the HF, very similar to North Atlantic fly. And then we'll be in oceanic airspace from that point on south. Roger. So, uh, folks, we can talk a little bit about uh, our departure out of Toronto and uh, the procedures we used uh, going over to the de-icing center. We were over here at Toronto's Terminal 1 at what's called the Hammerhead, just down in this corner here on Gate 179. We pushed back off of there. Air traffic control cleared us out Delta Quebec Taxiway, and uh, we worked our way down to Taxiway Delta and Alpha across Tango and across runway 33 right here. And this is where the de-icing center is located in Toronto. So as we get closer to the de-icing center, I can bring up this chart here. And uh, this is the centralized de-icing facility and all the various de-icing bays. Today's flight, we uh, taxied uh, down taxiway Echo to Pad 1 Center, which is just down in here. And uh, we de-iced in that area. We talked about the signboard display as I was approaching the parking position in the uh, de-icing bay. And uh, this is how it's all sequenced here. Uh, they, we've got a chart that shows us what sort of indications we're going to get. As you come into the de-icing center, it'll tell you, uh, like in this case, it's ABC 123. In our case, it was Air Canada 1244. Tells you what position you're going to. So we were one Charlie. And then as you approach the stop position, signboard arrows will gradually decrease, tell you to slow, and then to stop. Once you stop, you go through the de-icing process. And then uh, when we're cleared out, we have to get a verbal and a visual to leave the de-icing center. Double checking to make sure all the equipment is clear of the aircraft before we move the aircraft. So 
Uh, we uh, finished up. Russ called uh, the uh, uh, spray coordinator and uh, advised him that uh, we were ready to taxi. They cleared us to go, and then the signboard changed to Air Canada 1244, cleared to proceed. And then we proceed as per the clearance out of there. And uh, as you come out of the de-icing centre, you go back over to ground control. And then our departure here today took us uh, off the de-icing pad, and uh, we did uh, a little trip down uh, Victor here to Mike, over to Delta, and then transitioned on Bravo to Charlie, and all the way out to the button of runway 24 right, and then departed on runway 24 right. The uh, SID we did, On run, off runway 24 right is the uh, Lester 8 departure. This is a very common SID that we get coming out of Toronto. Certain restrictions uh, restricted to 10,000 feet below, uh, 10, 250 knots below 10,000 feet. Uh, and uh, this one here off 24 right, we do a, a minor turn, uh, unless otherwise assigned by ATC. The, uh, we climb on a heading of 237 degrees at Toronto, 1.6 DME. Left turn to a heading of 235 is assigned for headings to vectors to assigned route. And um, that actually uh, can be loaded into our uh, flight management computer, and we can fly that uh, on a managed in the LNAV mode, the lateral navigation mode. So that's what we did on that departure. And the jet aircraft maintained 5,000. So that's basically a Lester 8 departure, very straightforward. And uh, our particular departure there, we, uh, we used toga thrust because of uh, reports of wind shear in the area. And uh, toga thrust at this weight of the aircraft, we took off at approximately 145,000 kilos. The max weight of the aircraft is about 185,000 kilos, so when you're going full thrust at that weight, it gets up and goes. So our climb performance was excellent. Wind shear was no factor at all. We climbed out and uh, routine from there on. And uh, just one other thing I want to explain. You'll hear us, uh, I'll be talking to myself quite a bit as we climb out, advising Russ of what I'm seeing on my uh, ADI, the top part of the ADI. Uh, the various modes, the V-NAV modes, vertical navigation modes, L-NAV for lateral navigation, Command indicates an autopilot is engaged. If that switched to FD, it would indicate the autopilot's disengaged. We're just on flight director. And these are the auto thrust modes on the left-hand side. Right now, it's in speed mode. Every time a mode changes, I have to make a verbal call. The mode changes. It becomes a boxed item. I make a verbal call to advise my first officer that we're in a mode change, and we're both aware of what the aircraft is doing. And we have to always be aware of uh, the status on uh, the uh, FMA items to uh, make sure that we're not uh, off profile or we've inadvertently engaged a mode that we don't want. Air Canada is 1244 heavy with you at 350. We're estimating King at 1733 and uh, have requested uh, flight level 350, Mach decimal 77 and our cell call, Charlie, Quebec is Kilo Roman. Air Canada 1244, it's looking 350, estimating King at 1733. Uh, requesting flight level 350 at Mach decimal 77, is that correct? Yeah, we That's it. correct. And uh, let's see, call me back over King on uh, this frequency, primary HF today, 6577, for the backup 8846. Uh, call you have overhead King and uh, the HF today, 6577, the backup 8846, Air Canada's 1244. So we're still within uh, VHF range uh, of New York Air Inc, Aeronautical Radio. And uh, so Russ will make the position report on the VHF, and then uh, we'll be on HF after that. Four with a position over King. Air Canada 1244, New York. Air Canada 1244 is uh, position King at 1733, flight level 350. Estimate Kiner 1750. Next, Volvic, and fuel 28.6. Over. Okay, the 1244 King is 1733350, Kiner 1750, Volvic, next, 28.6 on the fuel. New York, now you can switch over to HF now. Good day. Canada's 1244, switch to HF. Good day. Okay, so uh, once we do uh, the switch over to HF, we set up our radios with the number one radio on uh, 121.5, the international distress frequency. Number two radio will go to 12345, which is the air-to-air -air frequency for aircraft to uh, communicate with each other out here. Uh, various issues can come up, uh, weather, ride conditions, things like that. And uh, we don't have to monitor the HF because we got a good cell call check. If uh, ATC needs to get a hold of us, they'll just give us a cell call. 
And uh, we'll talk to him on HF. So we're all set to go. So uh, we do have a little checklist that we run through. Uh, that caters primarily to the North Atlantic, but it also is good out here in the waters area. So uh, we'll make sure we've covered all our pertinent items. If you want to go ahead there, Russ. Okay, the uh, Oceanic ETOPS procedures uh, for the pilot flying, he verifies the clearance, which we've done. Uh, the Oceanic clearance was received, and we uh, checked the uh, coincident points and underlined them on our flight plan. The ETOPS uh, alternate weather is uh, right above the checklist there, and uh, we've checked that for our uh, time of use. The uh, ETOPS alternates go on the uh, FMS page, and uh, the HF cell call check we've done. Uh, we've uh, made sure that the uh, Mach number is set in the FMS and uh, the uh, ETOPS systems check. Uh, we have verified that all the uh, required systems for the ETOPS uh, portion of the flight are operational. So that uh, completes the uh, Oceanic and ETOPS uh, procedures. Excellent. So uh, after entry, we could uh, execute a slop here. Um, we're in and out of radar on this leg here, so uh, we could go one right uh, between here and Bovik and then back on track there. So why don't we do that, just so to avoid a nose-to-nose. -nose. So I'll put an R1 in here and uh, execute that. Just slop is a strategic lateral offset procedure, and uh, we're uh, permitted to go either one or two nautical miles right of track. And uh, this is to avoid a nose-to-nose -nose situation should there be some sort of an error on altitudes or tracks uh, over our waypoints or anywhere on the, tra on the uh, route for that matter. So it's just a bit of a safety measure we use. So the aircraft is setting itself up right now one mile right of track. And this is a procedure we use in the uh, North Atlantic, the Waters airspace, and also the, uh, the North Pacific. So folks, we're just approaching uh, the Bermuda Terminal area. We're uh, coming up over this waypoint, Bovik, and you can see there's another uh, boundary showing here. So as we uh, cross over Bovik, we're back onto VHF, and uh, there's a radar and uh, VHF site in Bermuda. It's New York Center remoted to Bermuda. So we'll come in over Bovik, and our route is down uh, Lima 461 through Bermuda's airspace and exiting at uh, GCAL. When we hit GCAL at the south end of Bermuda's airspace, we go back over to uh, HF, and um, and talking to Air Inc. as well, New York Air Inc. as well from that point south. So uh, this uh, area here uh, is uh, totally uh, VHF and radar coverage, so it's, uh, it's good for us. And with any luck, we'll get a view of Bermuda as we go by. So here we are cruising at uh, 37,000 feet. We're about an hour and 20 minutes out of St. Martin at this time. So uh, the folks from Just Planes have asked uh, Russ and I to give you a little information on our background. Um, I'm a graduate of Sioux College uh, Aviation Program in Sault Ste. Marie, Canada. Graduated in 1977. Uh, my first job was uh, as an instructor for uh, Sioux College, a sessional instructor for one year. While I was doing that, I was working part-time for Airedale, a local carrier up there, and I checked out as a flight attendant on the DC-3. So I did a little bit of that, and then eventually became a first officer on the Twin Otter. And uh, flew the Twin Otter uh, with Airedale on primarily the Nor Ontario contract all over Northern Ontario and uh, eventually was hired by Air Canada in July 1979. Uh, started out as a uh, second officer on the 727. Uh, flew in that position for eight years, and then two years as a uh, second officer on the L-1011, primarily on overseas flying, great aircraft to be on. And then finally got a right seat after 10 years with the airline. I got the bottom slot, first officer DC-9. And uh, flew the DC-9 as a first officer for five years, Love that aircraft, had a great time. And then uh, in order to get promoted, I bid the uh, regional jet. So I bid the captain's seat on the Canada Air RJ when we first got it at Air Canada in 1994 and uh, flew that position for three years. And then uh, back on the DC-9 as a captain for three years. And then uh, up to the Airbus A320. We actually fly the 319, 320, and 321. And did some very interesting flying on that. Uh, we uh, did some great charter flying on the Airbus. Uh, flying uh, professional sports teams, uh, rock bands, and uh, political charters, so we had some really good stuff going there. And then uh, just over a year ago, I checked out on the 767, and uh, we're flying the 767-300 here. It's a great aircraft. Uh, we fly almost uh, everywhere in Europe, and uh, we also go to South America, and we fly to Asia as well, too, so great variety of flying. So love this job. It's a fantastic airplane to fly and uh, great route structure.
So what do you think, Russ? You want to say a, a few words about how you get started in this business? Uh, yeah, I had a similar experience uh, at the beginning of my aviation career. I, uh, I went to uh, flying school in uh, Oshawa and uh, Buttonville and uh, completed my uh, training uh, there. Uh, then I went up north and, uh, funnily enough, worked at the uh, same uh, outfit as uh, Jim here at uh, Airedale uh, Flying Service, flying float planes. And uh, I worked my way up uh, to uh, a chief pilot position with a uh, commuter airline in uh, Saskatchewan and uh, uh, eventually uh, got a job with uh, WestJet, our competition. I was only with them for a year and uh, uh, decided to join Air Canada's team. Uh, <clears throat> I was uh, one of the uh, lucky pilots to be uh, hired directly on to the uh, right seat of the uh, 767 and I've been there ever since and uh, I agree with uh, Jim, this is probably one of the best uh, airplanes in the fleet uh, as far as destinations go and uh, I also agree with them that uh, I love the airplane. Okay, so uh, we're all set to uh get ready for our descent here. Russ has uh, loaded the approach into our flight management computer and we're planning a uh, Luba 1 arrival into uh, St. Martin. To intercept a VOR approach. Uh, all we've got for this uh, airport is a VOR approach to runway 10 as uh, this aircraft is not uh, GPS equipped so we're unable to the RNAV approach. But uh, weather's excellent and the minimums are at uh, 550 feet here, so we'll have no issues at all with weather. So uh, let's start off with a briefing on the uh, Aluba 1, if you're all set. 10-2, it's effective. 2nd of July, uh, 2009. And uh, it comes off of the uh, turnkey uh, intersection. We pick up a 225 track from there, and it basically comes down just to intercept our final approach track, which is uh, the 276 radial inbound of the St. Martin VOR. So that leads us into the uh, ILS, uh, sorry, the VOR Zulu runway 10. It's 13-2, effective, uh, 2nd July 09. And at, uh, the VOR is Papa Juliet Mike on 13-0, approach course 096 degrees. Minimum altitude by uh, Deber is 1,600 feet. The uh, MDA, uh, we add 50 feet to the published for uh, this operation, so it's 550 on the barometric altimeter. And uh, you can call me 100 above minimums. I'll call landing or go around flaps 20. In the event of a go around, it's uh, track 180 degrees, climb to 4,000, passing 2,600 feet within 10 DME, take a left turn, direct the Papa Juliet Mike VOR, and hold. Transition level, 6,500 feet for us on the descent. And the uh, highest MSA is off to the uh, southwest, 4,100 feet down in that quadrant. Got high terrain off the end of the runway as well, too. So the uh, charted visibility for this approach is uh, 3,500 meters. I'll call uh, 100 above and minimum. Okay, and if we do go around, uh, Russ, I'll call uh, go around flaps 20. I'll hit the go around switches and uh, ensure uh, go around thrust is achieved, go around attitude detained, and I'll fly the command bars. Okay, when I see pause and rate, I'll call. Okay, I'll call gear up. Very good, so uh, at uh, 400 feet AGL, I will call LNAV or heading select. In this case, LNAV will work fine for us and uh, fly the uh, command bars. And at 1,000 feet, I'll call bug up. I'll commence acceleration and call for flap retraction on schedule. I'll track the flaps on command. Okay, and once the flaps are selected up and the indicated airspeed is VRF 30 plus 80, I'll uh, call for a flight level change, climb thrust, and uh, command center. And we've got lots of fuel. We'll uh, be able to come around for a second approach if uh, for some reason we have to go around. Alternate Santiga, it's in great shape as well, too. So uh, basically, we'll uh, just fly the VNAV path until we're solidly visual. Then I'll disconnect and uh, hand fly the rest of the approach. Runway's uh, got about uh, 7447 as uh, the published length. So uh, we'll go uh, auto brakes three and uh, normal reverse. And we'll roll it out to the end and do the uh, turn procedure at the end of the runway. Start up the APU after landing, and we'll use the APU for the uh, station stop. Okay. Check one question. Okay, that all sounds good. What do you say we do a pre-descent checklist, please? All right. So uh, the landing is towards the east. Uh, this is the airport on our uh, jet chart here. 
and uh, the actual uh, airport diagram. Plan to touch down the first thousand feet of this runway, and this approach actually takes us uh, right over the beach and a little roadway. Lots of videos of this approach on YouTube for anybody who's interested. And uh, we roll out right to the end and do our turnaround at the end. Taxi on back and uh, take one of the ramp entrances, so whatever tower prefers, and into our uh, parking position. Air Canada 1244 San Juan Center Cross Turnkey at a maintain for level 090. Cross Turnkey at maintain 090 or Canada's 1244. Okay, so here comes uh, flight level. Zero nine zero. And that'll be turnkey at nine. American twenty one thirty six San Juan Center Radar. I'll put that in as a constraint, okay? Two three miles southeast of the juice intersection. Climb maintained for level three six zero. Texas sixteen ninety three Radar service terminated. Contact Bradshaw Tower one one nine point six. Nineteen six. Cactus sixteen ninety three. Good day. San Juan Jetpool 872 over Lupo, flight level 340. Left turn heading 130, cleared for the VOR Zulu, so you can approach runway 10, contact car 118 decimal 7. 130 now, uh, the heading cleared for the uh, VORZ Zulu, contact car 1244, switching to tower 187. Good day. Okay, let's go flaps 1. Flaps 2. Flaps are going to take you inside the Luba, I don't know. I might just uh, ease it out just a little bit yeah. there. I can switch off the tower. Okay. Uh, Julian, good afternoon. November 9 is here, Alpha 1000 feet. Tower. Nice up, we're off frequency. 1, 2, 8, 9, Okay, 5. so we're clear of the approach now. I'll just put down the uh, altitude here. Going B now. Roger. Speed intervene. And we're being at path. I'll arm up the LNAV. Roger. So we got LNAV selected, being at path. Power to Air Canada 1244, uh, heavy with you. We're on a heading of uh, uh, 135 to intercept the uh, VORZ. Runway 10. Air Canada 1244, Julian Atoro, runway 103 land, wind 1008. Clear land, uh, VOR 10, and check the wind here, Canada's 1244. For clear land, runway 10. Clear land. Okay, we're clear to land. Okay, let's go uh, flaps 5, please. Flaps 5, please. Bring it back to 180 for now. Six seven five reports in bad circuit. Six seven five. A couple little showers painting on the approach here. Nothing too serious. There we go. Hundred eighty knots. Beautiful. There's LNAV, picking up the track inbound. So, Luba is uh, 10 miles out, and we're just uh, coming up on point eight miles from there. And the VNAP starting on down. Profile's looking good. Okay, we got the runway visual. And our missed approach is uh, 4,000. If you could dial that in for us, please. Russ, thank you.
Actually, we don't have to restrict to 26, just 26 on the climb. We just keep going. So four is good. Sure. sure. Okay, so we're coming up on Dever. Okay, and flaps 25. Flaps through to 30. Transition just a little right here to get uh, right on the center line. Uh, we could do the quick level. Okay, we check 136, target 141. And a 675 for the switch. 675 contact and blood. And a VNAV path looks good on the pappies. Right on the path here. Black Wing 240, turn right down the 101011, one, one, ultimate 3005. 3005, we join a right down in 101. 1011. Get out of 420, copy that. And the auto throttle's off. Two, two, nine. 100. Black one, confirm, call sign. Uh, 339, uh, good evening, Thursday. Charlie 3, request taxi to San Bart. Request Alpha. Black one, 239, taxi Alpha, Ocean 10, 10012, item motor 3005. 3005, taxi uh, Alpha, Black one, 239. And manual braking. Take under 1244, back track 10, taxi via Charlie. Back track 10, taxi via Charlie, Canada 1244. Okay, so we'll just roll it out to the end, turn it around up here.
Welcome to St. Martin. Truly a beautiful approach coming in there and uh, lots of fun flying into this place. So we uh, hope the uh, folks from uh, Just Plains have an excellent stay in St. Martin. <laughs> and we'll see you next week for the return trip northbound. Thank you.